Thank you for watching. My name is Kome. Today, I'd like to explain camera exposure. Now, if you search for camera exposure on the internet, you will quickly find what's called exposure triangle with aperture, shutter speed, and ISO on each side. I really don't think this triangle will help you understand camera exposure. That's why I'm making this video. I'd like to show you a different analogy that I hope is more intuitive and more practical. Spoiler alert, it's a bucket. First, let me go over aperture, shutter speed, and ISO quickly. Aperture indicates the size of the opening in the lens. When the opening is bigger, more light goes through the lens. Also, the objects that are not in focus become more blurry. Shutter speed is how long the shutter stays open. Fast shutter speed freezes action. Slow shutter speed creates motion blur. ISO is the sensitivity of the image sensor. If you increase the ISO, the image becomes brighter. Aperture, shutter speed, and ISO are three of the most important values when taking a picture. However, in this age of smartphone and AI, do you still need to learn camera exposure? Well, for example, even if you don't want to learn cooking, it's still good to know you can add salt and pepper to your food to adjust the taste. In the same way, it's good to know you can just turn one dial in the program mode to get more background blur, for instance. There are so many tutorials that talk about the exposure triangle. I really don't think this triangle makes sense. In a cooking lesson, have you ever seen the cooking triangle that shows salt, pepper, and, I don't know, sugar? The triangle can only show balance, but aperture, shutter speed, and ISO are three independent parameters you can choose freely. Let me introduce a totally different analogy for camera exposure. If you have seen a square wood cup for Japanese sake called masu, that's what I have in mind. Instead of sake, we are scooping light in the air. Let me call it the exposure budget. The amount of light captured by the image sensor is aperture area, which is the area of the opening in the lens, times shutter speed times ISO. So let's say they correspond to the width, length, and the height of the budget. By the way, this is just an analogy. Don't use your camera to scoop your liquor, that's a bad idea. When it's bright like outdoor on a sunny day, you only need a small bucket because there is a lot of light in the air. When it's dark, if you use the same bucket, you can only scoop little light and the image becomes dark. You need a bigger bucket to get the right exposure and the shape of the bucket will affect the image. You can open the aperture and make the bucket wider or choose a slow shutter speed and make it longer or increase the ISO and make it taller. Once you made the bucket bigger, you can change its shape. You can keep the same volume by changing two parameters at the same time. For instance, you can double the aperture area while cutting the shutter speed by half. In short, wider bucket, wider aperture. Longer bucket, longer shutter speed. Taller bucket, higher ISO. So far, I've been avoiding using numbers on purpose because I understand they look like math and intimidating. I will focus on the numbers you actually see in the camera settings. Let's start with ISO. ISO is the sensitivity of the image sensor. Let me simplify and say ISO 100 is the basic setting that gives you the best image quality. If you change it to ISO 200, the image becomes twice as bright. But that's only when you are in the manual mode. Otherwise, the camera will change the aperture and shutter speed to compensate. If you keep increasing the ISO, you start to get grainy noise in the image. How much noise you get totally depends on the camera. You have to take pictures at night, magnify the images, and see for yourself. Old cameras show some noise even at ISO 800. Newer cameras can usually go much higher. Shutter speed, I hope, is more intuitive. If the shutter speed is one second, the shutter opens, and one second later, it closes. But the shutter speed is usually much faster than one second, like one two hundred fiftieth of a second for instance. If you slow the shutter speed to one one hundred twenty fifth without changing aperture or ISO, you capture twice the amount of light. As you might have noticed, we think about changing exposure by doubling or halving each parameter. Multiplying or dividing the value by two is called changing by one stop. Four times is two stops, eight times is three stops, and so on. Here are some of the shutter speeds you commonly see in the camera. If you are a software engineer, you will notice these numbers are close to the powers of 2. Every time you go left, 
you increase the shutter speed by one stop. Here are the typical ISO values. Going right increases the ISO by one stop. Aperture is a little more complicated. In the lens, there are little blades that open and close to adjust the amount of light that goes through. Aperture, or what's called the F number, corresponds to the diameter of the opening. On most lenses, you see a marking like 1 to 2. 2 is the aperture or F number when the blades are fully open. The diameter of the opening is focal length divided by the F number. You don't have to remember that. But the most important part is, when the number is doubled like from F2 to F4, the diameter becomes half. Also, the aperture area, which is the area of the opening in the lens, becomes one-fourth, and so does the amount of light that goes through. When you first start seeing the aperture numbers, the round numbers 2, 4, 8, 16 are easy to spot. As the number doubles, the amount of light becomes one quarter. By now you know it's called decreasing aperture by two stops. So what are you supposed to do if you want to reduce the amount of light by half? You multiply f2 by 1.4 and go to f2.8 for instance. 1.4 is the square root of 2. Each of these values is 1.4 times bigger than the previous one. Now I can explain using examples with actual numbers. Sunny day. You only need a small budget with narrow aperture at f16, fast shutter speed 250, and low ISO at 100, for instance. The image is sharp from near to far with no motion blur. Let's say it's 16 times darker on a cloudy day and you are shooting birds by the lake. That means your exposure budget needs to be 16 times bigger, that's a four stop increase. If you leave your camera in program mode, it will probably increase aperture and shutter speed by two stops each and choose f8 and shutter speed 60. However, if you want to have one particular bird in focus and freeze its motion, you can open the aperture and select a faster shutter speed. With most cameras, you can do this with one dial. As you turn the dial, the aperture changes from f8 to f4, while the shutter speed changes from 60 to 250. As you get to f4, the area in focus, also known as depth of field, becomes narrow, and some birds in the background become blurry. This blur is called bokeh. The original Japanese word is pronounced bokeh. It rhymes with sake, and it goes with my theme. If you want to capture all the birds in focus, then you turn the dial the other way. The aperture closes down and the depth of field becomes deeper. The shutter speed becomes slower at the same time. By the way, if you start paying attention to the shutter sound, you will notice when the shutter speed is too slow. If you want to get all the birds in focus without motion blur, then you have to increase the ISO. Increasing the ISO to 1600 will give you narrow aperture and fast shutter speed at the cost of possibly having a little noise in the image. If you like this video, please click on like and subscribe. If I get a good response, maybe I will create more videos on camera exposure and create a playlist called Exposure Budget List. Thank you and happy shooting!